If the name didn't give it away, this is a lighter version of the USG line which has been the backbone of the Nebula powered networks for years. And by light I don't mean that it weighs less, although it does since the router is now made of plastic instead of metal, but about Zyxer's attempt at simplifying things for the SMBs and power users. The USG Lite 60AX continues to use the Nebula Cloud platform and just like the SCR there is no comprehensive local management platform which I found a bit curious. This means that this router makes sense when used alongside multiple access points and switches, otherwise the Nebula platform is definitely overkill. At the same time, I noticed the similarities between it and the Asus Staff AX4200, so there is a chance that you can install OpenWRT in case Zyxel decided not to support this device anymore. The USG Lite 60AX does have a couple of 2.5 gigabit ports, a clear improvement over the Wi-Fi 60 SCR 50 axea but no, there is no support for the 6 GHz radio. Does it matter? I don't think it's a deal breaker, especially considering the current state of 6 GHz adoption, which is not that great. The multi link operation is barely supported on some mobile devices. Some other features include a subscription-free ransomware protection as well as other security-focused features including an ad blocker. This seems to be getting more popular nowadays and I wonder why is that, Google? Anyway, let's get a closer look at the Zyxel USG Lite 60AX. This router has a different form factor than let's say the USG Flex 200HP, which was designed to sit in a rack. But it does follow a very similar design to the SCR50 AXEE, so it sits vertically and it relies on a rotating piece of plastic for stability. It does work, but I am worried about its longevity. The case is made of plastic and Zyxer says that it used 95% post-consumer recycled, also known as PCR, plastics in the construction of the device which is a step in the right direction. The frame of the router is white like the rest of the case but there is a red portion which is a common characteristic for the Zyxer USG routers and gateways. Underneath it, there is a single status LED which shines through and you do need to consult the user manual to know what each color means. The individual status LEDs are just not cool anymore, right? Flip the router around and you can see the ports area. The first four are gigabit LAN ports followed by a couple of 2.5 gigabit ports, one for LAN, the other for WAN. Underneath them there is a reset button and a 12 volt power port. If you have a closer look above the ports we can see a removable cover which hides a console port and you can see the schematics here. After seeing that the USG Flex 200 HP relied on passive cooling, I had no doubts that the Lite 60 AX would take the same road and indeed there are no fans. Ubiquiti seems to be the only one adamant on normalizing it but other manufacturers found other ways to keep their hardware cool. As you can see from the video I took with a thermal camera, the USG Lite 60 AX does not heat up and the temperature remains within reasonable limits even while I was running some more heavier tests. Dust may accumulate in time and perhaps the thermal paste needs to be changed, so it's important to know if it's easy to get into the USG Lite 60X. I only had to remove the two screws at the bottom and then using a prying tool I detached the two vertical parts. Then I could see the antennas and after taking out the heat spreaders I could see the main components. I did make a dedicated teardown video if you want to see it in more detail. Anyway, these are the main components. And I also added a comparison table. Now let's go on with the tests and we're going to start by checking the single client throughput using three different client devices. One is Wi-Fi 6 and two are Wi-Fi 5. The throughput is actually more than expected, going above 1.5 gigabit per second upstream when using the 160 MHz channel bandwidth. It's actually second to the Asus Staff AX4200 which does share the same platform with the USG Lite AX60 so it's not really a coincidence. Using the 80 MHz channel bandwidth there are some better routers out there, but the Lite AX60 is still performing really well, going close to 1 gigabit. The throughput remains excellent even downstream, but let's also have a look at the range of the wireless router. We are the most interested in the spot where the signal attenuation is minus 85 dB, and you can see that the Wi-Fi 6 client had no trouble sustaining a decent throughput, while one Wi-Fi 5 was a bit less impressive and the other dropped completely. And this is true both upstream and downstream, so to get the maximum out of this router, use Wi-Fi 6 devices. I have also added a long-term performance 
performance graph which included a comparison with the Asus Star AX4200. Let's now check out the throughput when using the 2.4 GHz radio band since it's going to be used quite a lot considering the ever-growing number of client devices. I use the 40 MHz channel bandwidth to get a better throughput, but it's more likely wiser to use the 20 MHz for a better signal penetration. That being said, upstream it's a decent performance, especially when using the Wi-Fi 6 client, while the two Wi-Fi 5 clients' results were less interesting. The range test shows that we will get good results quite far, and at 70 feet in my house the signal attenuation was minus 74 dB. When compared to other wireless routers, the USG Lite AX60 is slightly above average. Now let's move on and see how the Zyxel USG Lite AX60 handles various types of traffic, ran on more than one client devices at the same time. And I use the same computers as before which you can see here, and I also have added the signal attenuation that I measured at the client level. The tool that I used is NetHydra which was developed by Mr. Jim Salter and can use it for yourself since it's available on GitHub. That being said, let's see the latency when 5 client devices ran simultaneous 1080p traffic. Unsurprisingly, we see the Wi-Fi 6E and 6 clients performing the best, with two of them remaining near 50 milliseconds for the entire duration of the test. The rest raised near and above 100 milliseconds, which is a bit far from ideal performance. Moving on, it's time to run simulated 4K traffic on the five client devices, and while there is definitely a latency increase, it's not as radical as I expected. It's actually a very similar performance to what I saw when I tested the Asus Staff AX4200. It's still not an ideal latency, so you should limit the number of clients or rely on cable if you absolutely need 5 devices to run 4K streaming at the same time. After that, I included intense browsing traffic to run alongside 1080p streaming and the first graph shows if there was an impact on the former type of latency. There obviously was, with the Wi-Fi 6E client freaking out and going above 100 milliseconds for 10% of the time. The rest stayed near 100 milliseconds, with one client, the Zima board, going a bit past 100 milliseconds for the entire test. The intense browsing graphics showed the decent performance with one client going above 1 second for 1% of the time, so it's negligible. Afterwards, I ran the intense browsing traffic alongside 4K streaming, and while I saw a very similar similar latency between the 5 client devices, the TAF AX4200 did a bit better here. The intense browsing graph does put the Lite 60X in the advantage. Now it's time to change things a bit and include a couple of downloaded clients, leaving one for 4K streaming and two for the intense browsing. The performance of the downloading clients seem a bit different than what I saw on the TAF AX4200. Also, the overall throughput for the downloading clients is 627.2 megabits per second. Next, I removed one downloading client and replaced Placed it with 4K streaming. One 4K streaming client gave up immediately, but the rest performed much better than expected. Better than what I saw on the TAF AX4200. Let's go even lighter on the USG Lite 60AX by running three types of simulated traffic on three client devices. The downloading client did a bit better than on the TAF AX4200, and I suppose the other two clients showed a somewhat similar performance. Now let's limit the stress even more by downloading a 1 megabyte file this time alongside intense browsing and voice over IP. I am going to compare the latency with the TAF AX4200 once again, and both the voice over IP and the intense browsing are almost identical, but the downloading client seems a bit better on the Zyxel router. Its throughput was 192.8 megabits per second. Lastly, I ran the downloading traffic on the five client devices, and the result is as expected. One client managed to get a latency over 3 seconds, so it's best not to push the router this much. Also, the total throughput was 659.1 megabits per second. Just like the SCR50AXEE, the Zyxel USG Lite 60AX was developed with the Nebula Cloud platform at its core, so there's very little thought put in the standalone software. There is one, but it's severely bare bones. There are three main areas. One is the dashboard which shows some status info, followed by the network where you can adjust the WAN settings, and lastly, there's the maintenance where you can get some tools for checking out some network behaviors, and the log section. That's all, but as I mentioned in the intro, I will attempt to install OpenWRT on it, so stay tuned for the next video. After adding the USG Lite 60X to the Nebula Cloud controller, I could see some status info on the dashboard, but I couldn't get some of the areas from the security section to get populated. The port area was also unusable. The client section is unpopulated, an issue that I had with the SCR50XEE before as well. The good news is that the monitor and the configure sections work as intended. I could check the logs, the VPN connections and get the threat report while the content filter report was under a paid subscription. Under configure we get quite a few options. 
First, we are interested to set up the Wi-Fi aspect, which can be done on the radio and SSID settings. And there are some advanced settings as well for rate limiting, setting up an authentication method for guest clients and adjusting the way the clients will interact with the network. We're not done because this is a security router and it does have some powerful features to offer. Under threat management, you can enable the blocking of various types of intrusions, including ads, but it is possible to set an exception list for IP address or clients, as well as block or allow certain domains. Under traffic management, we get some traffic shaping options, content filtering and more. We also get a firewall with implicit rules and it's possible to add and add virtual server. Lastly, we get some VPN settings and we can set up side-to-side -side VPNs including for non-Nebula peers and I have noticed that there is a remote access VPN which seems to be in beta right now. I saw that there were two 2.5 gigabit ports available and assumed that perhaps we would get some dual one options, but unfortunately I could not find it. Maybe it will be added in the future. This hands-off approach is very popular for a lot of clients because otherwise they would need a dedicated IT department, so the prospect that a remote team can handle all of their needs is the most appealing to them, which is why the cloud-only approach makes a lot of sense for most businesses, but it doesn't for power users. So who is the Zyxel USG Lite 60AX for? Judging by the Cloud Focus software, I'd say that despite being called light, it's still designed with businesses in mind, most likely the smaller ones. That's about all for now, subscribe if you want to see more of this type of videos, Thank you for watching and see you next time.